According to the Washington Post, the CIA has concluded that Russia intervened in the election to help you win the presidency. Your reaction? I think it's ridiculous. I think it's just another excuse. Uh, I don't believe it. Uh, I, I don't know why. And uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, they talked about uh, all sorts of things. Every week it's another excuse. We had a massive landslide victory, as you know, in the Electoral College. I guess the final numbers are now at 306, and she, you know, down to a very low number. Uh, no, I don't believe that at all. You say you don't know why. Do you think that the CIA is trying to overturn the results no, of the election or somehow to, to weaken you in office? Well, if you look at the story and you take a look at what they said, uh, there's great confusion. Nobody really knows. And hacking is very interesting. Once they hack, if you don't catch them in the act, you're not going to catch them. They have no idea if it's Russia or China or somebody. It could be somebody sitting in a bed someplace. I mean, they have no idea. So why would the CIA put out the story that the Russians wanted you to Well, win? I'm not sure they put it out. I think the Democrats are putting it out because they suffered one of the greatest defeats in the history of politics in this country. And frankly, I think they're putting it out. And it's ridiculous. We ought to get back to making America great again, which is what we're going to do. And we've already started the process. You've said repeatedly you don't believe the intelligence community's analysis that the Russians were involved. You but take here's a look. The they're not sure. They're fighting among themselves. They're not sure. But the question is, these are the folks you're going to have to rely on sure. to know what's going on of in the world. Of course, it may changes, you know, at the top. I mean, we're going to have different people coming in because we have our people. They have their people. Uh, and I have great respect for them. But if you read the stories, the various stories, there's disputing. I mean, they're disputing, and, and certain groups don't necessarily agree. Personally, it could be Russia. It, it, I don't really think it is, but who knows? I don't know either. They don't know, and I don't know. I just want to ask you about your skepticism about the intelligence community. You are getting the presidential daily brief yes. only once a week. Well, I, I get it when I need it. But is, it, is there no, some no, skepticism? I I, first of all, these are very good people that are giving me the briefings. And I say, if something should change from this point, immediately call me. I'm available on one minute's notice. I don't have to be told, you know, I'm like a smart person. I don't have to be told the same thing and the same words every single day for the next eight years. Could be eight years, but eight years. I don't need that. But I do say, if something should change, let us know. Now, in the meantime, my generals are great, are being briefed, and Mike Pence is being briefed, who is, by the way, one of my very good decisions. He's terrific. And they're being briefed, and I'm being briefed also. But if they're going to come in and tell me the exact same thing that they told me, that, you know, it doesn't change necessarily. Now, there'll be times where it might change. I mean, there'll be some very fluid situations. I'll be there not every day, but more than that. But I don't need to be told, Chris, the same thing every day, every morning, same words. Sir, nothing has changed. Let's go over it again. I don't need that. President Obama just ordered a full review of Russia's involvement hacking in the election, and Democrats are now calling for hearings. Do you think this is part of an effort to undercut you? Well, it could be. I think President Obama has been terrific. He's been, you know, very respectful of the process and everything else. So I saw that. But and, and I want it too. I think it's great. I think I don't want anyone hacking us. And I'm not only talking about countries, I'm talking about anyone, period. But if you're going to do that, I think you should not just say Russia, you should say other countries also, and maybe other individuals. It's but not do you necessarily think this is a political effort here. It could be. I mean, it could be. Hey, look, we had many people are saying one of the great victories of all time. They're very embarrassed. We'll have much more of our exclusive interview with Mr. Trump a little later. Who will he choose for Secretary of State, and will he really cut all ties to the Trump businesses? But first, we also went on a road trip with the president-elect to the Army-Navy game, a rivalry dating back to 1890. And along the way, we learned a lot about the style of our new commander-in-chief. <laughs> We pulled out of Trump Tower in a full-scale presidential motorcade. Streets in midtown Manhattan were blocked off, and the crowds watching signaled how they felt about the president-elect. At LaGuardia, we drove right up to Trump Force One. It was the first time we could find a president-elect was going to an Army-Navy game. Mr. Trump climbed on board the plane, he says, 
is a step up from Air Force One. Much of his team was there. Chief of Staff Reince Priebus and senior advisor Steve Bannon, National Security Advisor General Mike Flynn, and Rudy Giuliani, who just took himself out of the running for Secretary of State. Once we'd leveled off, I asked the president-elect about his new life. Army-Navy game, in a sense, is this your unofficial debut as Commander-in-Chief? No, it's just something I've wanted to see. Uh, it's beautiful. It's hopefully going to be a good game. Uh, but really just something I want to see. It's the armed forces the way I look at it, and I love and respect the armed forces. I mean, it's going to be, I think it, we're going to have a good time. You spent five years at the New York Military Academy, a boarding school, where you became the captain of cadets. What did you learn there about military discipline? Well, I learned that I respected it, and I respect people in the military, and I always have, at least since I've been there. And we had military people there. We had uh, drill sergeants and colonels, and we actually had a general. And I always respected those people, and I learned that at a young age. Uh, they're terrific. There is a lot of curiosity about your lifestyle as president. Are you going to live in the White House? Are you going to spend most of your time at Trump Tower? Yeah, no, I'm going to live in the White House with my family. Uh, Barron's going to finish up school because he's got just a couple of months to go, so it's a little hard to take him out of school. And Melania will be back and forth for that first couple of months. So we'll be staying in the White House. You talk about the fact that Mrs. Trump is going to stay back in New York with Barron until he finishes school. Are you going to be lonely rattling around in the White House by yourself for a few months? No, I'll be working. Uh, I'll be working. It's a very special place, and it represents so much. And uh, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do, more than I even thought. It's uh, so many things we can do to make America great again. I mean, that's what it's all about. And uh, I'll be working. I won't be lonely at all. Are your daughter Ivanka and her husband Jared Kushner, are they moving to Washington? Well, we're working that out right now. They're both very talented people. Uh, I won't be involved in my business at all, even though I have a legal right to be under the laws, as you know, because the president has a certain doctrine that he can do things. But I just don't want to do it. I, even if I could do it, which I'm allowed to, I wouldn't want to do it. I want to devote my time. What about them? Are they going to? Are they moving? Down? Well, theirs is a little bit different, and I think we'll have to see how the laws read. I would love to be able to have them involved. Uh, if you look at Ivanka, you take a look, and she's so strong, as you know, into the women's issue and child care and so many things. She'd be so good. You, nobody could do better than her, and I just have to see whether or not we can do that. And she would like to do that. And. I'd love to have Jared helping us on deals with other nations and see if we can do peace in the Middle East and other things. He's very talented. He's a very talented guy. So we're looking at that from a legal standpoint right now. Then it was on to the stadium for the game. First, a meeting with a group of Army cadets and Navy midshipmen. Uh, who's going to win? Who's going to win? <laughs> when he appeared in public to greet the crowd from a balcony, he received a big ovation. Later, we asked the president-elect about attending a game that now has special resonance for him. So what do you think? I think it's fantastic. These are incredible people. You see the enthusiasm, the spirit. Incredible. You're going to be the commander-in-chief in six weeks. Yeah. You're going to be in charge of these young men and women. Thoughts about that? Big responsibility. We have to make the right decisions. Uh, you know, it, it really is. It's a daunting responsibility. And we'll do the job. And if you missed it, Army beat Navy 21-17. Its first victory over the midshipmen in 15 years.
Coming up, much more of our exclusive interview with Donald Trump. We ask him to clear up exactly where he stands on climate change and about that big cabinet pick he still has to make for Secretary of State. As Fox News Sunday continues its special coverage of the Trump way.